Thank you very much for um, giving me a chance to talk about these, these numbers because they're extremely important. And uh, though I hate to be the bearer of bad news, I'm afraid that the numbers this year don't look good. Uh, we've been running this uh, research and analysis since 2017 now. And in 2021, it was the first time that we saw actually an increase of the mobile gender gap. It increased from uh, 15 to 16%. 16% might not seem much, but if you look at the absolute numbers, it translates into 264 million fewer women than men who have access to the mobile internet. So that's a quarter of a billion. And we know it's particularly important because people in low and middle income countries mostly use their mobile to access the mobile internet. So if you're not accessing the internet through your mobile, you're probably not accessing your, your, the internet overall, which creates a loss of um, economic and social opportunities. Given the size of the issue, it, it certainly looks like a daunting task, but we have a lot of experience and, and there's a lot that we can learn from. First of all, you need the data. And I think gender disaggregated data is extremely important. We're extremely thankful for the UK FCDO and Swedish CEDA to help us do this, um, this research. Once you have the data, what you need is targets. Every organization, private sector, public sector, civil society needs to set targets around gender. And once you have the targets, you need to act. And in particular, we've clearly identified what the barriers are in terms of mobile internet access. They affect men, they affect women, but they disproportionately affect women. The three key barriers are the affordability, in particular affordability of handsets. Um, and what we've seen in 2021 is the mobile gender gap in terms of smartphone access has also increased. So this issue is also increasing. But you also have the digital and uh, general um, literacy skills and the awareness of the internet. And to that, you could have safety and security, you could have lack of access, but also lack of relevant uh, services. So you really, everybody can play a role in making sure that we target and we act to bridge the gender gap. This is the part that really gives me hope because we now have like quite a few examples of, of actions that help bridge the gap. In particular, our Connected Women program through its commitment campaign since 2016 have been working with mobile operators to help bridge the gap. We work with more than 40 mobile operators, uh, a lot of them across Africa and emerging Asia in particular, who have collectively set targets um, after obviously analyzing their own gender, uh, gender gap and designed specific actions to bring women online. Through those actions in the past five years, they have managed to bring 55 million additional women online. So that's for us, it's obviously a great success story. But when it comes to addressing the barriers, on affordability, for instance, Safaricom in Kenya has done a lot to help put smartphones in, in the hands of women, or the state government in India as well is doing a lot. And if you think of digital literacy in particular, MTN in Africa has done a lot around digital skills, working in particular with our Miss Digital Toolkit. So overall, there's a lot out there, and as long as you set targets, act, but also share knowledge, we think there's a lot that can be done. And at the end of the day, it's extremely important. It's the only way that we can help reach SDG number five uh, around gender equality. And as we all know, when women thrive, economies and society thrive.